But the thing I would like to ask, Alan, I think I would put, if I took the periodic table, you've done, you've got advantages and disadvantages, and I think these are ways of, of counseling. If you, you might think, oh, I really want to do that. The competitor said this, so I want to respond in kind, but the disadvantage might be such, so I wouldn't do that. Right. And I think this is getting into the normative element. What is most effective and what is right. least effective, right. and right. what would I recommend that you do? But I would like to add an ethical component to this. Mm -hmm. Which of these strategies are ethical, which are not e yeah. are ethical, and therefore, as a, a professional communication counselor, I really can't say you should do something that is unethical. So I'm wondering if you've thought, Ooh. I know you've said to me that there are certain of these these modules that yeah. are strategies yeah. that are indeed unethical. Yeah. So have you thought about well, I think classifying more them often than of not, methods? there are a few that that are unethical. Like to bait someone, again to use that red herring, mm -hmm. uh, there's a play we call a call out, which really is is just simply a, almost a statement of, of unvarnished insult. You know, there Clearly, there's an ethical equation there that rises a little bit higher. There's a, that should go to a, a red light from a yellow light, mm -hmm. if you will. And so we've thought about within our software system, because we were able to now move this into an app mm -hmm. form, we've thought about, uh, and we may well, um, add some sort of um, lighting system or rating system so that if you alight on a particular recommendation, then you're reminded, careful. Mm -hmm. Um, but that is why that we have taken the time to outline the risks, much less the rewards, but particularly the risks of any play, and to, and to outline the, the downsides of a particular play. And I think there's probably a, currently a third um, buffer there that might suggest to uh, a practitioner to be careful, and that is that any time you go into, going into any particular play, if you want to counter that play, there are going to be uh, probably at least five, maybe six or seven uh, uh, prescriptives or tips for what to do. And if you read any of those online, you'll see that there is most definitely a spectrum of sort of play safe or play nice mm -hmm. or even play mean. That we're trying to give um, uh, practitioners a range of ideas. The whole, the whole point, one of the whole points of the system is to calibrate them so that they can understand much more qu quickly the nature of the environment that they're being forced to react to and then how to do it well. And hopefully, I think to your point, ethically. Is there any set kind of probability that if, if your opponent does this and you have three options, what are the probabilities of what the opponent will do if you do each one of these? Is there any kind of chain of, of consequences that t tells you what is likely to happen if you do one thing versus the other? Right now, um, that sort of information resides uh, in, in the heads of the people who work at my company mm -hmm. and our experience. Um, I think with the benefit of things like what they call big data, and really good analytic solutions and machine, uh, all over time these plays will be machine readable. Mm -hmm. And so we, will, we should be able to, to say that uh, the, the invocation of a play called a lantern where you admit something in advance can have a material benefit by some number. Mm -hmm. um, but we have 1,004 uh, prescriptives and tips related to the 24 plays. So uh, right now, we don't know. It's too much. <laughs> but I think over time we will. We're, we've already kind of segued into the, the, the final segment of our discussion. Um, and I guess I'd like to, to, to kick off the final part of that discussion with that. Alan, you talked about uh, the, the, current, the current version of the, the Playmaker system is what you call 2.0. What will 3.0 look like? What, what's, what's in the future uh, for it? And Professor Grunin, I'd like you to give uh, Mr. Mr. Kelly perhaps some advice on how he ought to continue to refine this uh, from a research perspective since we are speaking to the, to the readers of the International Journal of Communication. 
Well, I think we probably touched, uh, we probably have previewed, um, you know, aspects of 3.0 or 4.0 or whatever. Or I mean, whatever I, I, I absolutely acknowledge uh, that that this system, while it, I think it's arguably the first of its kind, is certainly not uh, the last in its own form, and I certainly welcome and expect other ontologies or structures or frameworks to enter in. I, if, it's, if, if ours is any good, others should come. Um, so I think there probably should be uh, some analytics to outline ethics. I think that you're going to see machine readability so that you can know more quickly the plays that are being run and to what end. I, uh, in some, some work that we're doing with Booz Allen right now, we believe that there's a possibility to create a self-learning uh, decision system. Hmm. Um, certainly we can add translations. We have dabbled in Spanish and German and uh, Mandarin uh, on this application. Those are daunting. We know enough to know that it's possible. <laughs> have you found um, cultural differences? Are there different plays in different cultures? Yeah. Certainly. There are uh, the, you know, the tendencies, let's say, the uh, Asian tendencies are what I would call to, to, to run plays that are more left-sided, lower engagement. Uh, uh, Germans, for instance, and I'm caving to massive uh, stereotypes, which is very <laughs> dangerous, but the Germans, for instance, uh, love a play called The Mirror. The Mirror is like a call-out with facts. It doesn't say, hey, you know, you're not a nice guy, but it says, you did this, 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 and this on February 13th. You know, heard that in the presidential debate. <laughs> I think so, you heard every point in the presidential <laughs> debate. So. You know, what's interesting is that uh, we we have offered uh, workshops and, and courses on four major continents now with this system, mm -hmm. and we we have seen absolutely um, how uh, culture or traditions or laws will modify the use of the plays, but we have not seen. Um, uh, and I hope I'm objective, but we, we have not seen um, that a situation where a play literally doesn't exist, let's say in Colombia, where you studied, or versus, let's say, Germany. Um, we think the plays, and this is part of our, our ambition, is if we, play, we think that we have a uniform set of the existent influence strategies in business, politics, pop culture, and, and academia. Um, it certainly varies, but we think we have it. There is a concept in Asia called saving face mm -hmm. that's extremely important. Is, do you think that is a play that should be added to the system? We've talked about saving face and whether or not that's an irreducible strategy. It, it wouldn't be in the United States probably, but it yeah. probably would be in, yeah. in China and Japan and other yeah. Asian countries. I don't quite have an answer for you. We, we, uh, we've talked about it. We, we, think that, we think that the notion of saving face has probably a lot more to do with framing, framing plays, what we call within the framing subclass, and much more in the testing, subtle plays like trial balloons and pings, where you're constantly, especially pings, where you're tr constantly trying to suggest something in order to make what might be to that culture an adamant point. Interesting. Well, Professor uh, Grinney, do you have any other advice for, for Alan uh, in terms of refining, ter looking forward? And, um, I think you've gone over some Well, of the main thing is that I would like to almost have a two-dimensional model of such stratagems, uh, one of which is symmetrical and one of which is asymmetrical. And it's possible, I, I don't know your system as well as you do, that if you did this, that many of these uh, plays are both symmetric, could be either symmetrical or asymmetrical, others aren't. But then thinking, are there other plays that are purely symmetrical could uh, it be, that you should put in there? Could you attach ratings to them in terms of their symmetry, or is it to you binary? It's, it is symmetrical or it's not, or are there gradations thereof? Could we grade well, them? I think the, the major difference is whether the person using a play is thinking about the interest of the people he or she is dealing with, not just the competitor, but the pe I mean, ultimately you're not communicating to your competitor, you're, com you're com communicating to the community, the customers, the employees, or whatever they are that you need to have a relationship with. 
in order to get their business, their loyalty, uh, and so on. So I don't, I, I wouldn't say, well, there are a number of things, but mostly, let's say, if you look at conflict resolution strategies, there's one called accommodation, which is an asymmetrical strategy, and I don't see any way you could make it symmetrical. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, another one called be, uh, be unconditionally constructive, which I don't see how that could be an asymmetrical strategy, unless you're only doing it as a form of pseudo-symmetry, that is, trying to appear to be interested in the other person when you really have no intention of listening to them or, or making a change. But so, so if, we could, if we could determine consideration or considerativeness <laughs> of, of a player using, employing an influence strategy, that might be helpful then. Yeah, I think that's ultimately what we're talking about. Okay. What is what is their their purpose in communicating? And again, I think these all are about well, some of it is obviously about strategy or marketing strategy, not yeah. just communication. Okay, but what are why are they doing this? Is it purely self-interest, or is it is it uh, symmetrical interest and so I have to be very clear that I, okay. I don't mean that self-interest and the interest of a public are mutually exclusive. Uh, I believe it's in the self-interest of an organization to behave in a way that does not have negative consequences for a public or that secures positive consequences that that public would want. So that's what we do when we develop a better product we are developing a product that has positive consequences for the person who uses it. But if there are negative consequences, yeah. we need to learn about what those are and not try to cover them up when we market the product for two, for example. And we can only learn that by having people try out the product or do informative research and so on. Are you giving me a new idea? Okay. There you go. Another challenge. Right. <laughs>